Who's calling 911? Where's your emergency? I need an emergency right here on the shooting at the, uh, the corner store next to CVS. Okay, do you, okay, do you know if anyone's been hit? The victim was eventually identified by his identification being found in his wallet as Joseph Edward Ross. He was eventually transported to the hospital where he passed. Our crime scene comes, takes photographs, really documents what's going on. Because there is a lot of activity, crowds start developing. So we start going up to those crowds. Hey, did you see what happened? Did you hear what happened? The witness at the scene uh, observed the victim walking through the parking lot, talking on a phone and arguing. And shortly thereafter, they observed a red Dodge pickup truck pulled in the parking lot. Yeah. Okay, your brother Joe was shot and killed around the corner, over at the corner store. He was shot? Yes. We're trying to find out what happened to him. You know anybody that drives like a red Dodge pickup truck? Oh, my friend Nate does. Who's Nick? This is someone that I met through a friend. What does he look like? Is he white or black? He's white. Okay. And he always hangs out with a black dude. Do you know the, the black male's name? I think it's Gerald. What else do you know about that? He only carries a 38 or a 9 mil. Has he ever gotten into it with your brother's court? They argue about a lot of stupid stuff. Nick's really, he seems like he's crazy. I wouldn't really want to mess with him. Jonathan Ross said Nicholas Nair was 23 years old, um, a small-time drug dealer who was out of work. All the links with the Red Dodge pickup truck, the history between the two of them, the subject being armed on a regular basis, that obviously then at that point propelled Nicholas Nair into being the suspect that we were looking for. Before we entered the room to interview Nick, he was sleeping. This referred to as the perp nap. Someone who's typically guilty will actually fall asleep in the interrogation room because they're so exhausted from the stress associated with waiting to be arrested. Hey, Nick, right? Hmm. You have any idea what this is about? No, 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 it's um, gunpoint, down the car, out of the car. Yeah, but you know what, anything that you have an idea what left that? Uh, now, when you were stopped, you had a couple of guns on you? Mm-hmm. I was going to go shooting range, I just put turn the corner. And the lights went on. Well, while we're here to investigate something that happened earlier tonight, and we're wondering if you could tell us what happened tonight. With you? At midnight, um, I was at home for the longest time. Is there any reason that your truck would have been at the CVS to run a park today? No. <laughs> Then, I wasn't there. I don't know. <laughs> the reason that it was 
who's there? Mm-hmm. It's because something could have been there. He's very engaged right now. He's up at the table. He's close in. He's in a very strong position. And at first, I'm back. So I move in to show that I also have a very firm position in my assertion that his vehicle is there. If it seems as though I'm not sure, he'll take that and he'll run with it. And that allows him to have an escape. You had a reason to tell you tonight. You have a person that you fire him tonight? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just say, for example, maybe it's not one of the three that you have on you. It doesn't alleviate the fact that you were there when shots are fired. You know what? You were involved with something in the At that location. And I'd like to hear your side of what happened there. When he's feeling threatened, he starts to back up. And the hand that he's able to actually goes into his pocket. So it's another defense mechanism that he's using where he's hiding and concealing what actually happened. You can choose <coughs> to be deceptive all you want. Okay. I have never seen you in this hotel. Maybe what points about the this, this thing of this is that you were there because people wrote down the tag number of your truck there. Okay. Yeah, the other truck shouldn't have been there. Wasn't my possession. It was there. Wasn't my possession line. But you were there. I wasn't there. Yeah, you weren't. How do you know that? Video cameras? Did you see him on game? Kind of distinct. So I'm guessing that thing had a whole video around the whole camera, around the whole store? I'm not, I'm not even going to this video everywhere. Is it not? At that point, I didn't have video of the shooting, but he's nodding because now he believes it. So with him, I felt comfortable throwing out the bluff in such a way because I didn't think he was going to call me on it, and I thought he would accept it. His true face comes out, and it comes out in grand fashion. We were speechless. He just didn't care. It was just, it was pure evil. From the very beginning of this investigation, it was a whodunit. And within hours, we had the suspect in custody, we had a confession, him charged, and he was on his way to jail. Nick Marion was sentenced to life in prison. That confession showed that he planned to kill Joseph from the very beginning. And it showed his mindset that he did not care. There's no chance of Nick getting out ever. He'll die in prison and that's probably best because I do believe that he would kill again if he had the chance.